Hi, it's Miss Leslie from Youth Guidance Mentoring Academy, and today our book is The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind by William Kakawamba and Brian Wheeler. The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind. In a small village in Malawi, where people had no money for lights, nightfall came quickly and hurried poor farmers to bed. But for William, the darkness was best for dreaming. He dreamed of building things and taking them apart, like the trucks with bottle cap wheels parked under his bed and pieces of radios that he'd cracked open in wonder. If I can hear the music, then where is the band? His grandpa's tales of magic also whispered in the pitch black of his room. Witch planes passed through the window while ghost dancers twirled around the room as if her if, as if a hundred men were inside their bodies. Look at all those dreams he's having. At dawn in the fields, William scanned the maze rows for magical beams, then wondered as a truck rumbled past, how does its engine make it go? Pay attention where you throw that hoe, his father shouted. They'll, they'll cut your foot off. To look at those dangerous. These are oh, this art style is so cool. For its power over dancers and flying things, magic could not bring the rain. Without water, the sun rose angry each morning and scorched the fields, turning the maize into dust. So this planting corn, right? That's maize. Without food, Maui began to starve. So without the water from the rain. All the crops are dying in this small village. Soon William's father gathered the children and said, from now on, we eat only one meal per day. Make it last. From now on. In the evening, they sat around the lantern and ate their handful, watching hungry people pass like spirits along the road. Money also disappeared with the rain. Pepini, his father said, I am sorry. You have to drop out of school. Now William stood on the road and watched the lucky students pass. Along with the monster in his belly and the lump in his throat, for weeks he sulked under the mango tree until he remembered the library was down the road, a gift from the Americans. He found science books filled with brilliant pictures. With his English dictionary close by, William put together how engineers moved those big trucks and how radios pulled music from the sky. But the greatest picture of all was a machine taller than the tallest tree with blades like a fan. A giant pinwheel? Something to catch magic? That's what he's looking at right now. Slowly, he built the sentence, windmills can produce electricity and pump water. He closed his eyes and saw a windmill outside his home, pulling electricity from the breeze and, bring, and bringing light to the dark valley. He saw the machine drawing cool water from the ground, sending it gushing through the thirsty fields, turning the maize tall and green. Even when farmers' prayers for rain went unanswered, this windmill was more than a machine. It was a weapon to fight hunger. Megetsi Amino, he answered. I will build electric wind. So I don't know if I explained this, but this is a an African story of of this man William. He was he's born in Africa and he's trying to help his family's farm. So this sentence right here that I did not read correctly is his African language. In the junkyard, pieces appeared, like rusted treasures in a tall grass. A tractor fan, some pipe, and bearings and bolts that required every muscle to move. Tonga, he shouted to the birds and spiders, holding up his prize. But as William dragged his medals home, people called out, This boy is Misala. Only crazy people play with trash. So he's collecting all these gears and stuff to make a windmill. He's finding all of his scrap scrap metals and stuff. After many weeks, William arranged his pieces in the dirt. A broken bicycle wheel, 
a rusted bottle cap and plastic pipe, and even a small generator that powered a headlight on a bike. Three days, or for four, for three days, he bolted, banged, and tinkered, while chickens squawked and dogs barked and neighbors shook their heads saying, what's Misola doing? So all of his neighbors are confused at what he's doing. His cousin Jeffrey and his friend Gilbert soon appeared. Molly Bob on we? They greeted, can we help with electric wind? Grab your pangas and follow me. Oh, that's what those knives are called. He said, and he took them into the forest. Together they swung their sharp blades into the trunks of blue gum trees, then hammered them together to make the tower. Standing atop, William shouted, bring it up. While the boys tugged and heaved, a crowd gathered below and gazed at the strange machine, and now leaned and wobbled like a clumsy giraffe. Some giggled, others teased, but William waited for the wind. Like always it came, first a breeze, then a gushing gale, a gusting gale. The tower swayed and the blinds, the blades spun around. So the wind is harnessing. The windmill is harnessing all the wind. With sore hands, once slowed by hunger and darkness, William connected wires to, to a small bulb, which flickered at first and then surged as bright as the sun. Tonga, he shouted, I have made electric wind. So that windmill is powering this light bulb right now. What's your abino? A man yelled, well done. As the doubters clapped and cheered, William knew he had just begun. Light could not fill empty bellies, but another windmill could soak the dry ground, creating food where once there was none. Masageta Sokinga, electric wind can feed my country, William thought. And that was the strongest magic of all. So he kept building windmills and look at all the crops that come to life. All right, so this is about the author and it's a true story. So William Kakawamba was born in 1987 and grew up near the village of Wimby, located in central Malawi. Like many people in Malawi and the rest of the sub-Saharan Africa, William's father, Tyrell, was a farmer. The Kawambis grew a, a kind of white sweet corn called maize, which they ate for every meal in the form of porridge called Sima. To make extra money for clothes, medicine, and other essentials, they raised tobacco to sell in the capital city, Longwe. Because their food only came from the ground, any problems with the weather or changes in the price of seeds or fertilizer could cause serious problems. That's exactly what happened in 2001 and 2002. A severe drought killed most of the maize fields in Malawi, including those of William's father. Within several months, the entire country had run out of food and began to starve, a terrible event known as a famine. Eating only one meal per day, William, his parents, and six sisters began losing weight. At one point, his father went temporarily blind from hunger. The famine killed over 10,000 people in Malawi, including many in Wimbe. With no money to pay for school fees, high school in Malawi is not free like in America. William had to drop out, but instead of sulking around, he began visiting a library that had started by the American government. There he found books on science, which he loved. William didn't speak good English, so he used dictionaries to learn the words describing the pictures that had intrigued him. One of the pictures was a windmill. The words said that the windmills could produce electricity and pump water. Like most people in Malawi, William's parents had no electricity, and water could be used to feed his father's fields. Never again would they have to depend on the rain. I built a windmill. I will build a windmill, William thought. The pieces William used to build his windmill were a tractor fan, shock absorber, and a frame of a broken bicycle. Ooh, look, there it is right there. That's the original one. 
For blades, he melted plastic pipe over a fire and flattened them, then carved their shape with a saw. For a generator, he used a dynamo, which is this tiny bottle-shaped device that produces electricity by turning magnets inside of a coil of wire, something called electromagnetism. When the wind blew, the blades acted like pedals and spun the tire, which turned the coils inside the dynamo and produced a current. A wire from the dynamo reached down to William's room and powered a small light bulb. He was 14 years old when he did this. Eventually, William used his windmill to charge a car battery, allowing him to power four light bulbs in his parents' house. But his dream of pumping water wasn't achieved until several years later when he built his green machine, which pulled water from a small well near his house and fed his mother's garden, allowing her to grow vegetables year round. In 2007, William had discovered some, some journalists and invited to speak at the TED conference in Tanzania. He'd never been on an airplane or even seen the internet. Many people were moved by his story and donated money to help send him back to school and eventually install a solar powered water pump that irrigated his father's fields, forever protecting them from hunger. William is now a student at Dartmouth College in Hanover, New Hampshire. He is studying to be an engineer and plans to return to Malawi to work on renewable energy for electricity and pumping water into villages. That's amazing. What else we got? And that is the story of a young William. He was very determined and looks like he made a very big difference in his family's life and his community. That's awesome. So thank you for reading The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind with me. Until next time, I'll see you later.